नमस्कार मैं अशोक व्यास बिजन ऑफिशिया वॉइस ऑफ कम्युनिटी कार्यक्रम में आपका स्वागत है आज सोमवार है तेईस नवंबर 2020 आज के बिजन ऑफ एशिया में हम शुरुआत करेंगे उस प्रेरक संबोधन के अंश से जिसमें पंडित दीनदयाल पेट्रोलियम यूनिवर्सिटी को संबोधित किया प्रधानमंत्री नरेंद्र मोदी जी ने उस संवाद का अंश जिसमें सी के बारे में फैली हुई भ्रांतियों को दूर करने का बहुत सार्थक प्रयत्न किया गया निकुंज त्रिवेदी द्वारा जो कि संस्थापक हैं कोलिशन ऑफ नॉर्थ अमेरिका के इसके अलावा एक अंश उस मुलाकात का जिसमें बैजू मंगेशकर अपने नए एल्बम विद इन यू के बारे में बता रहे हैं और समापन करेंगे श्रद्धांजलि के साथ डॉक्टर अजय लोढ़ा को जो 21 नवंबर को हमारे बीच नहीं रहे उनके साथ हुई इस बातचीत के अंश से आज के विजन ऑफ एशिया का समापन करेंगे पर अभी लेते हैं एक छोटा सा ब्रेक होते हैं हाजिर छोटे से ब्रेक के बाद पंडित दीनदयाल पेट्रोलियम यूनिवर्सिटी एक महत्वपूर्ण भूमिका निभा रही है और धीरे धीरे इसकी प्रतिष्ठा फैलने लगी है गांधीनगर गुजरात में विद्यमान है ये पी जिसको संबोधित करते हुए प्रधानमंत्री नरेंद्र मोदी ने ये बात याद दिलाई कि यदि हम निश्चय के साथ कार्य करें तो कुछ भी कार्य करना असंभव नहीं है इस बात को चरितार्थ करते हुए कई उदाहरणों के साथ उन्होंने अपनी बात को सुनने वालों तक पहुंचाया प्रस्तुत है उस संबोधन का ये छोटा सा अंश साथियों मानव जीवन के लिए गति और प्रगति अनिवार्य है साथ साथ हमें भावी पीढ़ी के लिए प्रकृति और पर्यावरण की रक्षा करना भी उतना ही आवश्यक है जैसे क्लीन एनर्जी उज्जवल भविष्य की एक आशा है जैसे भविष्य के लिए प्रकृति के लिए पर्यावरण के लिए विकास के लिए क्लीन एनर्जी की बात होती है वैसे ही जीवन में भी दो बातें जरूरी है मैं आपको उपदेश नहीं दे रहा हूं अपने अनुभव से बताता हूं दो बातें बहुत जरूरी है एक क्लीन स्लेट और दूसरा क्लीन हार्ट हम अक्सर सुनते हैं आप भी बोलते होंगे आप भी सुनते हैं छोड़ो यार ये तो ऐसा ही है छोड़ो यार कुछ नहीं होगा अरे यार अपना क्या है चलो एडजस्ट कर लो चलो चलते चलो कई बार लोग बोलते हैं कि देश में ये सब ऐसे ही चलेगा हमारे यहां तो ऐसे ही होता रहा अरे भाई यही तो अपनी परंपरा है ऐसे ही होना है साथियों ये सारी बातें हारे हुए मन की बातें हुई है ये टूटे हुए मन की बातें होती है एक प्रकार से जिसको जंग लग गए ऐसे मस्तिष्क से बातें होती है ये सारी बातें कुछ लोगों के मन मस्तिष्क में चिपक जाती है वो इसी अप्रोच के साथ हर काम करते हैं लेकिन आज की जो पीढ़ी है 21वीं सदी का जो युवा है 
उसको एक क्लीन सेट क्लीन स्लेट के साथ पूरी तरह क्लीन स्लेट के साथ आगे बढ़ना चाहिए सी भी एक महत्वपूर्ण कदम भारत सरकार द्वारा भारत के पड़ोसी राष्ट्रों में अल्पसंख्यकों के प्रताड़ना के निवारण की दृष्टि से एक महत्वपूर्ण कदम माना जाता रहा है पर इस सी के लागू करते समय जिस तरह के नेरेटिव्स चल पड़े और उससे कुछ गलतफहमियों के चलते निहित स्वार्थ से प्रेरित लोगों ने भारत में कुछ दंगों का सूत्रपात भी कर दिया था क्या है सी और क्या है इसकी आवश्यकता इसके बारे में फैली भ्रांतियों को दूर करने का बीड़ा अब कोलेशन ऑफ नॉर्थ अमेरिका द्वारा निकुंज त्रिवेदी जी के नेतृत्व में उठाया गया है पिछले वीकेंड में हुए एक ऑनलाइन संवाद में उनका साथ दे रही थी सुप्रीम कोर्ट की वकील शुभी खान और प्रियंका देव भी इस संवाद में सम्मिलित थी प्रस्तुत है इस बातचीत का ये महत्वपूर्ण अंश Okay, so I think uh, uh, well, if you if you looked at my video, the CAA is basically the citizenship. It was a CAB before Citizenship Amendment Bill, and of course, it was passed by both houses, so it became the Citizenship Amendment Act, and it is basically to help those that are religiously persecuted in India's religiously persecuted minorities, I should say, in uh, bordering countries. So there's been a lot of confusion about it. Um, it's led to, as as you guys know, riots in India. I think a uh, little bit of commotion in the U.S. as well. That's become pretty significant. Um, but uh, there's been a lot of confusion about it because people have linked it with things like the Assam Accord that have happened in the past. Uh, things like the NRC NPC came in at the uh, at the same time. So um, I think there was massive, massive confusion about it, and of course. there was a narrative that kind of carried the wrong uh story and when i say wrong misrepresented and unobjectable facts so, so Bhuji, what are your thoughts um people have spun this as an anti muslim anti dalit law and uh, which which kind of boggles my mind so perhaps you can share your thoughts on it thank you so much nikunj ji uh, the video which i just saw i think that is so relevant in today's time and you know i literally had tears in my eyes because you cannot imagine the plight of those people it is easy for us to you know arrange these conferences it is easy for us uh, for me to you know uh, stand or sit on a dais or deliver a speech on the subject but you know the pain these people go through it is very important for everybody to understand you know from from each and every country of the world so uh, there are questions like what is ca i can understand that is a technical question because many confusions have been created Uh, some people are misunderstood about it and some people are maliciously and deliberately creating confusions but i would definitely come to the legal aspects of it but just give me few uh, moments because i would like to cover uh, the entire concept behind it uh, when i uh, hear questions like um, what is the need of ca when i hear questions like uh, uh, you know is it anti muslim or what about human rights is it the human right violations of muslims you know these questions amaze me nikunj ji and i'm sure you would agree with me because as an indian muslim i live with so much dignity and with so much pride in my country and i would tell you why these questions amaze me see everybody like all of us know that the partition of country the our country partition of bharat happened on the basis of religion why it happened and how it happened is a different theory altogether that concept of ghazwai hind and making india islamic state that is a different subject altogether but after the partition uh, you know minorities from both the countries were still migrating you know uh, minorities from india were migrating to pakistan and minorities from pakistan were migrating to india so to protect their rights there was a nehru liaquat pact and uh, nehru ji was the prime minister of india at that time and liaquat uh, ji was the leader of pakistan so there was a nehru liaquat pact which said 
that okay both the countries will make certain uh, protective laws for the minorities and in case because india was a secular state and pakistan was an islamic state so it was decided that if pakistan would fail if an islamic state would fail to protect the rights of those minorities india would pitch in and india would always welcome those people with open arms so this is nothing which has to do with the present government this uh, subject has been uh, you know cropped up since ages like we we have been seeing that minorities were persecuted so there are reasons why i would like to tell you that it is nothing against muslims can ever happen in india like india is a secular state one mm -hmm. then part 3 of our constitution uh, speaks about fundamental rights article 12 to article 35 and uh, specifically article 25 to 30 are specifically for minorities religious cultural and linguistic since partition till today at the time of partition muslims were 3 crores in india right now they are 30 crores so there is not even a question of persecution of uh, or any human right violation of even legal right violation of muslims in india there are lakhs and lakhs of mosques and madrasas in india and all those madrasas and mosques they are not even under the government administrative uh, control however most of the temples are under the government control and uh, there are muslim institutions who receive donations even internationally and even the donations are not taxable there are so many facilities aid support policies that to government sponsored which muslims get in india then there is a specific minority ministry in india and uh, despite being secular all the muslim personal laws are still running parallel judiciary parallel education system everything is going on in india and all the premier positions like uh, president vice president chief justice of india home minister education minister etc have been proudly held by muslims in india on the contrary let me give you a, a quick picture of pakistan bangladesh and afghanistan all three uh, countries are islamic state they have sharia law hindus customs practices marriages etc are invalid constitutionally imagine your yeah. existence is invalid in their country constitutionally so there is nobody to even listen to their plight in pakistan from 22% i think approx 2% hindus are left in bangladesh from 23% to 7% in afghanistan forget about percentage you can count them in numbers so where are where are those hindus they are either killed or all of them have been converted and this has been confirmed by united nations human rights uh, commission report this is not just my opinion this is this has been confirmed and uh, how many temples have been broken in these countries you know and uh, how many ngos institutions or foreign funding these people are getting to protect their rights nobody is there to even listen to them so whose human rights are being violated where muslim kids are separated from the entire world so uh, there are separate uh, separatist organizations then there are extremist organizations and uh, once a child becomes a separatist then it is easy to make him an extremist once he is made an extremist then it is very easy to make him a terrorist like uh, uh, al qaeda or uh, hizbul mujahideen or isis or jaish e mohammed they cannot approach me and you know they cannot make subui khan a terrorist they have to you know let you go through a process of separatism extremism and terrorism only then they can use you as a pawn to achieve their goal of islamic state and this process also needs funding so there are institutions like pfi so if we understand this narrative you would it it would be it would not be rocket science to understand that no one is against muslims subui khan is celebrated in india at times i become so emotional at the kind of love and support and faith i get from people so you know a muslim is never criticized or looked at with doubt in india has never been the case in india baju mangeshkar ek udiyaman gayak bhi hain sangeetkar bhi hain aur nishtha se karya karte hain bollywood ki chamak damak se dur rahe hain हालांकि वो मंगेशकर परिवार में जन्मे और लता मंगेशकर उनकी बुआ लगती हैं उन्होंने लता मंगेशकर जी के साथ भी एक एल्बम निकाला है पर हाल ही में उनका नया एल्बम आया है विद इन यू इसके बारे में उनसे हुई बातचीत का ये छोटा सा अंश पेश है तो मैं पहले हजरत शाह हुसैन का कलाम गाता हूँ जिसको मैंने ही कम्पोज किया तो ये गानों के धुने भी मेरी ही है और मैंने ही गाया है इसको मेरे साहेबा 
साहिबा मैं तेरी हो मुखिया मैं तेरी हो मुखिया मुखिया मैनू ना बेसारी तू मैनू ना बेसारी मैनू ना बेसारी तू मैनू ना बेसारी हर गलू में चुकिया हर गलू में चुकिया चुकिया मेरे साहेबा मैं तेरी हो दामन तेरे में लुकिया लुकिया मेरे साहेबा मैं तेरी हो मुखिया आप देख रहे हैं विजनो वेशिया वॉइस ऑफ कम्युनिटी कार्यक्रम ये कार्यक्रम सोम मंगल बुद्ध और गुरुवार को शाम आठ बजे आईटीवी गोल्ड पर आपकी सेवा में पेश किया जाता है इसके साथ ही साथ इस कार्यक्रम का एक साप्ताहिक अंक हम आपके लिए सजा कर लाते हैं रविवार को सुबह ग्यारह बजे आपकी उत्साहवर्धक प्रतिक्रियाओं के लिए आपका आभार हमेशा की तरफ व्यक्त करते हुए निवेदन है बने रहे हमारे साथ जारी रहेगा बिजनो पेश इस छोटे से ब्रेक के बाद कोविड के कारण पिछले दिनों हमने बड़े महत्वपूर्ण बंधु बांधवों को अपने बीच से जाते हुए देखा है इस पीड़ा का एक और पड़ाव हमारे जीवन में अब न्यूयॉर्क में विशेष रूप से डॉक्टर अजय लोढ़ा के हमारे बीच न रहने से 21 नवंबर को उत्पन्न हुआ है पिछले कुछ महीनों से वो कोविड 19 से जूझ रहे थे जनवरी के महीने में अपने पुत्र का भारत में विवाह करके वो लौटे थे मेडिकल की पढ़ाई करके वो सीधे अमेरिका कई वर्षों पहले जब आए थे तब उनका परिवार यहाँ पर था फिर भी संघर्ष की यात्रा के साथ साथ अपने उत्साह का उन्होंने जिस तरह से समाज के सेवा के लिए प्रयोग किया वो अनुकरणीय है डॉक्टर अजय लोढ़ा को 2016 में एलिस आइलैंड पुरस्कार से भी सम्मानित किया गया था कई पुरस्कारों से सम्मानित डॉक्टर अजय ने अपना समर्पित नेतृत्व प्रदान किया महत्वपूर्ण संगठन आपी और राणा को भी उनके नेतृत्व में बड़े महत्वपूर्ण आयोजनों को लोग आज भी याद करते हैं एक आत्मीय संपदा के साथ साथ तत्परता से और उत्साह से सबकी सेवा के लिए आगे रहने वाले डॉक्टर अजय एक जिंदा दिल इंसान थे उनके न रहने की कसक सभी महसूस कर रहे हैं और ये अवसर ऐसा है जब उनको श्रद्धांजलि और उनकी आत्मा की शांति की प्रार्थना के साथ साथ उनके बंधु बांधवों उनके परिवारजनों के अंदर उनकी अनुपस्थिति को सहन करने की शक्ति के लिए भी प्रार्थना करते हुए आप तक पहुंचा रहे हैं बातचीत का अंश जिसमें डॉक्टर अजय लोढ़ा अपने एलिस आइलैंड अवार्ड के बाद के दिनों में हमारे साथ आईटीवी स्टूडियो में उपस्थित थे इट वाज इंडीड अ वेरी वेरी गुड सेरेमनी एंड अ गुड एक्सपीरियंस टू बी इन देयर द वे दे मेक यू मार्च ऑन द रेड कारपेट the way the ceremony is held it makes you feel very patriotic also at that time full of emotion and uh, you know the way they conduct the ceremony by all the uh, you know military people are there they are marching with you and they do patriotic songs okay so this is how the ceremony was conducted really and when your name is announced you uh, your picture is displayed on the screen people see you walking uh, towards the dais uh, so was there any uh, particular thought that you recollect uh, which touched you as you were walking uh? 
receive this medal and when this was uh, being conferred to you, literally uh, any emotion that uh, you may want to share. I was very nervous. In one sentence, I can tell you. <laughs> <laughs> it was very nervous. I don't know even. When the name was announced, I just walked and, uh, you know, the picture was there. And they, they gave us brief, you know, very short introduction of our, all the honorees they were giving. And the medal was given photographs. For but I can tell you one of the best moments of my life. Huh. Really, no doubt about it. Definitely. And it becomes even more special, as you mentioned, this is uh, dedicated to immigrants and that speaks of uh, the spirit with which America welcomes and embraces with open arms and helps immigrants feel a part of this place, uh, which indeed uh, is a very special country in the whole world. It makes us not only proud of the country, but we also look back and think about the day when we landed here. Uh, so that point, it's a new birth uh, in a way because you are adopting total new environment, uh, assimilating in a new cultural environment. And I still remember when someone, even when they're visiting America on tourist visa, they get visa, there is a sense of joy in them, in their family members, amongst friends. Walk us to that moment in your life when you decided that oh, I'm going to America, you got the visa, you like uh, you know, you hear a lot of stories and there were a lot of people who had stories, uh, who were telling their stories, uh, you know, like the general secretary of of this Melissa Award, you know, Neko, this known as Neko, who is there from last 18 years. He was telling his he came to this country with, I think, uh, $2.50. And today, he's giving employment to 2,000 people. Okay, one of very rich people. So there were a lot of stories, a lot of different but fortunately, you know, I consider myself lucky that uh, I did not come with two dollars fifty cents. Friends were here. Okay. <laughs> Very good. So I had a full support, but definitely there was a big cultural difference. Finished my medical school, and uh, as soon as I finished medical school, my I landed here. It was the last day and first day. My last day of my medical school, the internship, and I was in the train, and uh, I came here, and then uh, the real struggle starts. You know, basically, a, a cultural difference what you see from India as compared to here in all the of the life. Okay, really fascinated when I met uh, our Prime Minister Narendra, Mr. Shri Narendra Modi ji. Some some glow is there, and I really admire what he's doing. Okay, uh, there is some criticism that uh, you know things are not being done what he has promised. But you have to understand, you know, India is a big country with a lot of politics and a lot of problems. It's not electric switch. You come and turn on and off, things are being done. But I think he's going in the right direction, definitely. Uh, we met with, uh, you know, Amitabh Bachchan, who, was a, who is a brand ambassador for RP. And, uh, you know, during President Ravi Jagidar's time, who started this uh, traumatic brain injury program, which Amitabh Bachchan became the brand ambassador. And he came to RP. He was with us for four or five hours. Okay. It was a very fascinating moment when uh, we had individual photographs and he was mingling with us really. And uh, whatever we asked him at that time and free of cost, okay. And uh, he was just what we are doing. And we are carrying this traumatic brain injury program. And then uh, uh, Dr. Ajay Loda ko prem aur shraddha ke saath yaad karte huye. Aaj ke karakter mein humara saath dene ke liye aapka abhar vyakt karte huye. स्वस्थ रहें अपना ख्याल रखें ऐसी बात को भी याद करते हुए अनुमति लेते हैं विजन ऑफ एशिया अ वॉइस ऑफ द कम्युनिटी कार्यक्रम समाप्त करते हुए पर आपको याद दिला दें फेसबुक पर आप हमारे मित्र बने और आईटीवी गोल्ड के यूट्यूब चैनल को भी सब्सक्राइब करें हमें लिखें इवेंट्स एट आई टी पर अशोक व्यास को अनुमति दें नमस्कार